We've been talking to our correspondents over the last two hours all across uh, U Ukraine with uh, uh, more uh, on that 40 mile long Russian convoy in the outskirts of the capital, Kyiv. I spoke earlier in the day with Kyiv's mayor, Vitaly Klitschko. Mayor Klitschko, what is the situation in Kyiv right now? The uh, situation is strange. Uh, the Russian groups uh, make attack to Kyiv and uh, <clears throat> they. Uh, non-stop, uh, we listen to the explosion every hours uh, uh, during last night, for last night, it's uh, last uh, four days. Uh, the people is very nervous, they spent a lot of uh, time in bunkers. And uh, right now is so many uh, <clears throat> groups, uh, diversion groups uh, in our city is right now is pretty strange. It's Russian diversion groups. How effective have the civilians who have taken up arms, how effective has that been in defending Kyiv? We never was so patriotic. Uh, I'm proud of our army. Uh, the, our Ukrainian army stayed front of one of the strongest army in the war. But uh, our uh, soldiers is heroes. They uh, show great performance. And right now, so many thousands uh, of um, uh, civilians come in and uh, build civilian defense. Uh, people uh, take the weapons, receive the weapons, and ready to defend our homes, defend our families, defend our future and our country. And uh, I am very proud of this, uh, really, some time to see how people patriotic, how people told we uh, doesn't have the army. Uh, it's not interested how strong the Russian army. We ready to fight and ready to die for our home country, for our families, because it's our home. It's uh, it's our future and. Somebody want to come into our home and want to steal, steal our future from us. How, how long can Kyiv hold out? How long can, can you hold on to the city? Uh, I'm not ready to give you a clear answer. answer. So long, so long time if we still in life. Mr. Mayor, do you have a do you have a message to Vladimir Putin? We was in USSR. We don't want back to Russian Empire. We see our future as democratic, modern uh, European country. Is it? No discussion. It's our goal. We're fighting for that. We're fighting for our country. We're fighting for our dream. Mayor Klitschko, I appreciate your your time. I wish you well. Thank you. Thank you for support. People, it's unity. The world unity can stop the war. We don't need the war. We are a peaceful nation, peaceful people. We never was aggressive to anyone. In this war, we have to stop all together. Thank you. Big regards to the United States. While Mayor Klitschko is trying to lead his city, acclaimed chef and humanitarian Jose Andres is among those just outside Ukraine uh, along the uh, Polish-Ukrainian border. His World Central Kitchen is making fresh hot meals for, uh, for Ukrainians who have crossed over, who have become refugees. It's a scene we've watched Jose Andres and his team carry out many times across the globe, from Puerto Rico to Beirut. There's nothing about this disaster, however, that is accidental. Chef Andres joins me now, uh, or joins me tonight from Poland. Jose, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, what have you been doing? Uh, wh what, what's your setup like here? Well, uh, World Central Kitchen arrived already uh, three days ago. I arrived uh, yesterday evening, and I landed in Barstow, and I drove four hours all the way to the town of Medica, uh, to the, you know, the, the the right the place where Ukraine meets with Poland and is probably in Medica the place that we see the most refugees leaving Ukraine into Poland 
So for, for people who don't realize, and, and I just made that border crossing today from, from Poland, there are hundreds throughout the day, probably thousands of mostly women and children who have made it finally to the border after days and days of really difficult travel in many cases by train, uh, by bus, by car, by walking, however they can get there. And they are hungry, they are disoriented, they are separated from their loved ones, from their husbands, from their boyfriends, their family members. You are there feeding them. How do you get food to that place? Or is it the model that you usually use, which is kind of mobilizing local kitchens to, to get food and serve it there at the border? Well, uh, all of the above. I think today we reach around 15,000 meals. Tomorrow, we know we're going to be doing more than 30,000 meals. We are only a small fraction of all the meals that are happening. So yes, we partner with local restaurants, catering companies, sometimes our food trucks that we position very quickly where we see the need is the biggest. Even some places that all of a sudden in the southern part of the border in Poland, that all of a sudden we see uh, no support. But I wanna tell you one thing. It's amazing to see that the people that are taking care of not only the Ukrainians, but the many other nationals living Ukraine right now are retired firefighters that because many of them, some are uh, retiring uh, from the army and they were cooks. They have this spectacular, almost from World War II kind of systems of making big soups and keeping the soups hot with wood and feeding people as they arrive a bowl of hot soup. People need to remember, we are in freezing temperatures. Right now I'm holding my phone and it seems like my fingers are about to break and I am in the comfort of a nice hotel. I cannot imagine Anderson, those women and children walking sometimes for 24, 50 hours, 50 kilometers, one, two, three days to get to the border under these freezing temperatures is used. Uh, so sad to see that in Europe today, a nation like Ukraine has to be going through what they're going through, right? Yeah, I mean, you have certainly seen a lot of, of very difficult circumstances to see women and children particularly the children, you know, who don't necessarily know what's going on fully, some of the very young ones, it's, it's really just heartbreaking. That scene at the border really just stays with me uh, since I saw it. When you are able to engage with a child, first thing they tell you is, my dad is back in Ukraine. My dad is back in Ukraine. And I have a feeling that those children, even very young, they know why their dads are in Ukraine is everybody is in the defense on Ukraine and breaks your heart. Uh, I was in Medica yesterday night, late at night, 11.45, and as many people were coming in, uh, I saw a group of around 10 young uh, boys, one of them American, that I was too slow to even ask for his name, that they were going in the opposite direction. We can see every day that these men crossing the line, not leaving, Ukraine, but going into Ukraine to do what? To join their armies, to join their people with one only idea in mind, to be there defending every city in Ukraine from the Russian attack. And this breaks your heart, quite frankly. Chef Jose Andres, I appreciate you being here. Thank you. Thank you very much.